Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Harika. So in previous videos, we have seen how to upload uh, items into the queue using add queue item, which is one of the activity of uh, studio. But now uh, be, uh, considering few of the disadvantages that we have uh, with add queue item, we also have one more item uh, activity, which is called as bulk add queue item. So uh, if you have, uh, we've seen one example where if the Excel data is so huge, then in such cases add queue item would take longer time which is one of the downside i can say with respect to add queue item so in such case, cases you can go for bulk add queue item so let's see how this actually works and what are the common exceptions that we face while using this activity and also the advantages we've uh, i just mentioned that it is used to the time taken for adding the items into the queue comparatively is less uh, when we both compare the both of the activities like add q item and bulk add q item and also there are some downsides when we talk about bulk add q item so let's see what are all those but before to that let's uh, look into add q a bulk add q item activity and the properties and how we can work into that so now i am going to take one more sequence let's say bulk q before to which I would just delete this queue or I'll create the queue with the same name. So if you have referred to the previous videos by this time, it is clear for you how we can create the queues from Orchestrator. So now I would say bulk add queue item. And here, if you just observe, we have the following as the properties. So these are the common ones, error, continue on error, display name, and timeout. Then we have uh, something called as commit type. So here, if you observe, we have two types, which is all or nothing, and the other one is process all independently. So if you go ahead with all or nothing, then in that case, whatever the items are there in the data table, all the items would be added into the queue but if there is any exception no item would be added so that's what it meant by the commit type all or nothing if there is no exception all the items would be added if there is at least one exception while adding then nothing would be added into the queue then we have other type called as process all independently so in this case let's suppose there are 100 items in the queue and when we are processing the items independently let's suppose fifth item got exception while adding so only that fifth item wouldn't be added and the next items would be added in the same way whatever is facing the exception or error while adding only those wouldn't be added but remaining all items would be added into the queue that's what it is meant by the commit type process all independently and after which we have the data table so just like how we are giving it in the queue add queue item so here also we would be taking it from a, a data table so let's suppose i would declare it here so let me just take commit type all or nothing and I would give the data table dt input and I should give the queue name. So I have created the queue name as demo queue and I will provide this in double quotes. So just like add queue item, we have orchestrator folder path as we are in the default folder and accessing the queue in the same folder, we don't have to provide it and if you just observe here we have something called as result so okay we are missing out this private so if you just check this then you cannot see the logs of it in the verbose level so i'm not checking this one as of now and we have something called as result so whenever you uh gave the commit type so whatever the except uh, when you select process all independently whatever uh, that are facing exceptions all those items that were not added into the queue so that would be taken back and given it into the data table so you can give a uh, declare a data table here that would give you the items which are not added into the queue so i would declare something like dt output so 
whenever I declare here, the data type would be taken default. So if you just observe here, it is a data table. So that's how it works uh, with respect to bulk queue. Um, and now I would just execute this. As of now, I have zero remaining items. So this input has, uh, I believe it has five. So there are five items in this. Let's run this. So as we are not using for each loop here, so even though if we have a, a major amount of data in the Excel also, it would take a very less time when compared to add queue item. So that's one of the advantage. So I can just directly go and check how many items. There are five items are added here. So I can see all the five items here. So this is the advantage when we talk about bulk add queue item. So let's say I have a when you compare uh, this bulk add queue item and the add queue item. So I'm just going to run this process once again and it wouldn't throw any error that it, it is having the same data that it's going to add into the queue now. So the same data it has added into the queue. So there are chances that we can see the duplicate data and there is no option in the properties that we could set it to the unique reference. So that's one of the downside when it comes to bulk add queue item. So if you wanted to add um, this bulk add queue item to a queue in the orchestrator which is set as unique. So let's suppose this is the unique queue which we have created and seen in the earlier video. So this has a unique reference. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to replace the queue name with unique queue and now we have to provide the unique reference for this particular thing. So let's suppose run this particular flow which has a unique queue and if I just show you here sorry so I can just go edit and if you can observe here we have unique reference set to yes but in case of bulk add queue we cannot keep it as yes so let's execute this and see what exception we would face if we proceed in this way Okay, and the queue items got added in this. I believe these are not the items that we are adding. So if I'm not wrong, maybe uh, this would have the data. So let's see. By writing the data or I can debug this and see how it is executing. So now by this time, my DT output should have the, okay. Let's use a right range and see if we have the data. I'm not sure what is there in output. So let's delete this. And the data table is DT output. So nothing should be processed if I am correct. So if you see here, it shows the error, right? 
it shows error creating transaction reference is required for unique reference queues so this is how it works it doesn't get it doesn't upload the items into the queue so i can explain you more clearly by taking a new queue item which is dummy unique queue and i can set this to one and add and also i would delete everything from here save this so this is my queue which has zero items at the moment and i would say change this name as dummy unique queue let us run this so let's check this out so if you observe this dummy unique doesn't have any values actually it doesn't have any data that means no queue is added here but we have all the data because as we have set this output result that's why we haven't seen any exception so but all the data is added here so if i have added the header but before i didn't we can check all the data is shown up here but let's suppose if this is not there the same exception would be thrown and the program would stop execution let's delete this and run it again so it would throw an error okay the execution has stopped okay as we have set our process all independently let's go for all or nothing and see what exception it is throwing there so if you see uh, it is showing the message HTTP operation exception as bad request, right? So whenever we are using, so it shows operation return and invalid status code bad request. So you have seen when it is all or nothing, then it will show through the error bad or nothing sorry bad request but if it is process all independently in such case uh, usually whatever the data it is there it it will either process whatever is working fine and if it's not uh, if it, if there is no exception then it wouldn't process that particular data so in this case we are getting error but it is shown into the excel but here it is directly stopping the execution so that's how it works these are the common exceptions we have seen and uh, i can say in case of this when uh, we are going for bulk add queue item it's preferably better to go for process all independently because in such case whatever the uh, items that are not adding into the queue those items you can retrieve into a data table and you can process them again uh, in case of all or nothing then definitely you if there is an exception, then you cannot process all the items into the queue. So that's how it works for various commit types. And also we have seen what are the exceptions that would happen for different commit types. And the disadvantages, if you ask me with this is um, definitely we don't have the unique reference. So in such cases, there are chances that we process duplicate items. So um, there's, uh, it's, it's definitely, you know, time consuming when there's a huge data. And also the advantages are it is very quick activity when compared to add queue item. So these are the things that we have discussed as a part of today's video. So I hope this is clear for you. And if you have any questions, you can uh, feel free to mention in the comments section i would answer your questions and if you like the content please do like the video and share with your friends and do subscribe to my channel so we have few more items that we're going to discuss in the next uh, videos like uploading uh, by using a csv file and also uploading items through orchestrator api so i come up with uh, many of the videos on the same series so stay tuned to my channel guys thank you so much for watching